Hello everyone, uh, you are watching my YouTube channel and I'm Fayaz doing PhD in Chemistry at UNSW uh, Sydney, Australia and I'll be talking about uh, what uh, chromophore is responsible for coloring in compounds and why compounds look colored and what is the reason behind that. That will be our main topic and the bigger chapter in terms of what I'm talking about is ultraviolet light uh, UV visible spectroscopy in simple words and I'm following the book uh, from the Pavia uh, introduction to spectroscopy written by Pavia and co-authors and uh, I have made multiple videos regarding uh, spectroscopy uh, such as IR and MR and UV and if you are new to my YouTube channel please have a look at the uh, uh, channel I have made more than 110 videos uh, on my channel so far and About different topics of organic chemistry ranging from retrosynthesis to natural products retrocyclic chemistry and Different areas of organic chemistry basically and in this video we will be, we will be learning about What are the visible spectra? Why some compounds look colored and why what is the difference between absorbed color absorbed wavelength and uh, emitted color so the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum so in my first video I will I ex had explained what is electromagnetic spectrum lying between 400 to 700 nanometer is the visible region so electromagnetic spectrum is a spectrum which contains UV and I uh, far UV or x-rays NMR radiations radio waves but there's a region like IR rate range as well but there's a region which ranges from 400 to 750 nanometer that is called visible region light waves with wavelengths between these limits appear colored to the human eye as anyone who has seen light diffracted by a prism uh, or a diffraction effect of rainbow knows one end of the visible spectrum is violet and the other end is red so if you see that the spectrum so one end is V and another end is R so this is violet and this is red light with a wavelength near 400 nanometer is violet okay while that with a 750 nanometer is red so red has the highest wavelength and violet has the low, uh, lowest wavelengths and 400 is for violet and 750 is for the red okay let's move on. if we if we don't have this uh, pdf copy of the textbook uh, written by pavia and co-authors uh, then i'm happy to email you guys if you drop down the email below in this video next is the phenomena of color in compounds however is not as straightforward as the preceding discussion would suggest if a substance absorbs visible light it appears to have a color if not it appears white so if if any substance absorbs color that is going to have that is going to be colored but if it doesn't absorb anything then that color is be going to be the white however compounds that absorb light in the visible region of the spectrum do not possess the color corresponding to the wavelength of the absorbed light rather there is an inverse relationship between the observed color and the color absorbed. So the relationship between this is inverse. What is the relationship? So observed color and the color absorbed. When uh, we observe light emitted from a source as from a lamp or an emission spectrum, we observe the color corresponding to the wavelength of the light being emitted. A light source emitting violet light emits light at the high energy end of the visible spectrum. A light source emitting red light emits light at the low energy end of the spectrum. However, when we observe the color of a particular object or substance, we do not observe that object or substance emitting light. Certainly, the substance does not glow in the dark. Rather, we observe the light that is being reflected. The color that our eye perceives is not the color corresponding to the wavelength of the light absorbed, but its complement. 
when white light falls on an object light of a particular wavelength is absorbed the remainder of the light is reflected the eye and brain register all the reflected light as the color complementary to the color that was absorbed in the case of transparent objects or solutions the eye receives the light that is transmitted again light of a particular wavelength is absorbed and the remaining light passes through to reach the eye as therefore as before the eye registers this transmitted light as a color complementary to the color that was absorbed so table 7.1 this one and coming up this one illustrates the relationship between the wavelength of light absorbed by a substance and the color perceived by an observer. So sim some similar compounds may serve to underscore these relationships between the absorption spectrum and the observed color. The structural formulas of these examples are shown. Notice that each of these substances has a highly extended conjugated system highly extended conjugate system of electrons such extensive elect conjugation uh, shifts uh, uh, their electronic spectra to such long wavelength that they absorb visible light and appear colored for example if you look at into this table 7.13 relationship between the color of light absorbed by a compound and the observed color of the compound so violet is a color color of light absorbed so the wavelength that is going to be 400 nanometer and you are going to see a yellow color okay so if anything that uh, absorbs the color of light absorbs blue or any substance that, any material that absorbs light of 450 nanometer then you will look at that substance and that will appear to your eyes will be orange so that is called complementary color so yellow is complementary color for violet and blue is complementary color for orange and blue green is complementary color for red yellow green is complementary color for red violet yellow is complementary color for violet orange and red is for blue green and red is for green so if any substance or any material absorbs blue green light or light a wavelength of light 500 nanometer then that color observed color will be red if yellow green light colored light absorbed the wavelength of light absorbed will be 530 nanometer and the color observed color will be red violet if the color of light absorbed is yellow then the wavelength of light absorbed is 550 nanometer and it will appear to your eyes as violet then we have an orange red color and the wavelength of light absorbed is 600 nanometer and the observed color is blue green and the color of absorbed light is red then wavelength of light absorbed is 700 nanometer and the color that will appear to your eyes is green so that is uh, the major concept of this lecture is to just to uh, clarify that that what you see uh, is the observed color it's not the actually absorbed light and these are the some complementary colors that are summarized in this table so have a look at this work uh, in this example of beta carotene pigment from carrots which we use in the vegetables is an orange color and having lambda max of 450 nanometer and cyanidin blue pigment of corn flour having a lambda max of 545 nanometer and malachite green a triphenyl methane dye having lambda, lambda max of 670 nanometer appears green there is a structure of a beta carotene, a carotenoid which is a class of plant pigments having a lambda max of 450 nanometer and this is the conjugate system so this double bond is in conjugation as you can see my arrows that's why it appears at higher wavelength or it appears in the visible region because of this 
extended pi conjugation and this compound is the beautiful example of extended pi conjugation you can see how this one is involved in conjugation similarly you can go from the bottom side as well another this is the structure of cyanidine chloride and anthocyanin another class of plant pigments which is colored and this one is melachite green also a colored compound having lambda max of 617 nanometer so compounds that appear in this region are called visible compounds visible light absorbing compounds and they are colored because of the extended conjugation uh, and if you have any further questions uh, this is the end of the chapter from UV visible spectroscopy next I'll be making video about uh, the exercise uh, from the Pavia book about the ultraviolet light chapter I think that's chapter 7 so that next video will be about how to solve the problems from this exercise and if you have any questions please let me know thanks take care bye